how to configure IEEE 802.1x port based authentication. The 802.1x standard defines a client server based access control and authentication protocol that prevents unauthorized clients from connecting to a LAN through publicly accessible pub ports unless they are properly authenticated. Of course, I got this from this document here, cisco.com. The authentication server authenticates each client connected, connected to a switch port before making available any services offered by the switch or the LAN. Until the client is authenticated, 802.1x access control allows only extensible authentication protocol over LAN, Cisco discovery protocol, and spanning tree traffic through the port to which the client is connected. After authentication is successful, normal traffic can pass through the port. To allow per user ACLs or VLAN assignment, you must enable AAA authorization to configure the switch for all network related service requests. This is the process. This is the 802.1x AAA process. To configure uh, 802.1x port based authentication, you must enable authentication, authorization, and accounting, or AAA, and specify the authentication met method list. A method list describes the sequence and authentication method to be queried to uh, authenticate a user. These are the summary steps. Um, summary steps of the uh, this process, 802.1x AAA process. So step one, uh, a user connects to a port on the switch. Authentication is performed. VLAN assignment is enabled as appropriate based on this radius server configuration. The switch sends a start message to an accounting server. Re-authentication is performed as necessary. The switch sends an interim accounting update to the accounting server that is based on the result of re-authentication. The user disconnects from the port. The switch sends a stop message message to the accounting server. Uh, this is how you configure it. And these are the summary steps. And I've got an uh, example configuration here. And this is basically the, so in 802.1x, uh, you actually have device roles. So as you can see here, PC1 is the supplicant in this case. Uh, switch1 is the authenticator. And radius server is the authentication server. So in this video, I'm just going to configure uh, switch1. Configure 802.1x and AAA on the switch. I'm now going to configure PC1 and authentication server. So yeah, let me just explain a little more. I mean, let me just uh, explain in detail the uh, summary steps. And we have we have the detailed steps here. So here, this is basically how you enable AAA. And this is how you uh, create an 802.1x authentication method, method list. And yeah. And this is how you enable uh, 802.1x authentication globally on the switch. And this is this here is this is where you configure the switch to use user radius authorization for all network related service requests, such as 
per user ACLs or VLAN assignment. And this is how you specify the IP address of the server. And <clears throat> this is actually how you specify the server name. And this is how you specify the, the IP address of the Redis server. So maybe this is just a typo here. And this is how you specify the key. In my example, I'm going to also configure the authorization port and accounting port, which are these. And of course, specifies the port connected to the client that is to be enabled for 802.1x authentication and enter interface configuration mode. Sets the port to access mode only if you configured the Redis server in a step. Yeah, so you, only if you configured the Redis server in a step. Okay. And this is how you enable it or 802.1x authentication on the port. And this here sets the interface port access entity to act only as an authenticator and ignore messages meant for a supplicant. Not sure I understand that, but yeah, it's part of the configuration. Sets the interface port access entity to act only as an authenticator and ignore messages meant for a supplicant. Okay. All right, so I'm going to perform this example configuration. Um, I can just copy and paste actually. But I'm going to do type these commands manually. Okay, authentication. And this is this is how you specify that you are going to use uh, or set authentication list for authentication lists for IEEE 802.1x and of course default and this is how you specify the default group and I'm gonna say radius which is use the list of radius hosts or servers and then going to specify or to configure authorization and so network so again um, this is about this here configures the switch to use user radius authorization for all network related service requests such as per user ACLs or VLAN assignment. So I'm going to say default group radius. And then I can configure the radius servers. So in this case, I'm just going to specify the name of the servers. And then IP address maybe for I can just copy paste this and then key going to use this key exit and so here I triple E dot one X Sorry, I triple E dot I triple E arrow to the one X global configuration commands. And then system enable, yeah, enable or disable sysauth control. And then, yeah, that's it. And then I'm going to the port where the supplicant is connected to. So in this case, uh, port gig zero slash zero. 
So, okay, switch port. So if I don't, let's try if it's gonna work actually. So authentication, yeah. So if I don't specify switch port mode access yet, I don't have the option to I specify the or to basically enter this command here. So I have to say switch port mode access and then I would have that option. And I will set it to auto. Of course we have also we also have these other commands or options. First authorized port states port state set to authorized, port state set to unauthorized. I'm gonna say auto. And then I'm gonna say that, because that is part of the, again, that is um, this here, going back to the documentation, sets the interface port access entity to act only as an authenticator and ignore messages meant for a supplicant and that's it save I can just verify my configuration so I see that these configurations are here this, are, this is on the global configuration, and this is the port where the supplicant is connected to, or PC1 is connected to, and configuration is looking good. So these are the commands that we can use to basically verify. So here, display uh, statistics for all ports. So it will give us all the ports. And this here, uh, for a specific port. So I can say that one X interface is statistics. Yeah. So of course nothing is <clears throat> in this output because uh, we don't have clients that are authenticated yet. And again, uh, like I said, I am not going to configure the supplicant or PC1 and authentication server. And of course I can, I'm just gonna do all the verifications command. Authenticator, yeah. So display. Administrative and operational status for a switch. Authenticator. Yeah, uh, that one X info for this interface. And I can also use this command. So authorized, I mean status and authorized. Uh, okay, none because nothing is connected to this. I mean, the client is not connected or is not authenticated yet. And if I do this command here, I will get nothing. So, yeah. Um, that's it. Uh, this configuration again that I have is based on this document from cisco.com. And I'm going to uh, add this link in the description of this video.